Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 4 talking about Test Analysis and Design and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 4.2 Black Box Test Techniques. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be talking about the last technique under this category that is State Transition Testing. Well, when it comes to the state transition testing, of course, this is one of its kind again, just like decision table testing. Here we talk about the requirements which has any sort of control flow involved or have a definition between the different states and the transitions possible. So mainly the requirements can be defined in terms of transactional way or functional way where uh, an action can be taken to the next state of the application where there are only possible ways to reach out a point. In simple words, if I have to say, for example, in order to access your account, you will have to swipe in your card, enter the PIN, but entering the PIN could be a little tricky thing, right? You can enter the PIN right in very first attempt and you'll be taken to the main menu option. If in case your uh, first PIN attempt is wrong, the loop will continue there and you will be allowed to do two more attempts uh, if in case wrong and third attempt, it will just reject your card and at the same time, you will not be able to continue further. So in this case, uh, to understand and deflect this requirement into a pictorial way and then derive the minimum number of test cases, we make use of a technique called as straight transition testing. So I do understand again, theoretically, it could be very difficult to make out things. But of course, when it comes to the reality with some examples, it would make more sense. So yes, let's quickly have a look on what state transition testing is trying to let us know about its characteristics and the technique. And let's see how the sample exam questions would look like and what we have to answer. So the very first thing here to talk about state transition testing is it basically exhibits the various states of a scenario or system and displays the possible transitions between them. Now, the most important thing here to understand is that state transition testing is done with help of state transition diagram, which is basically a pictorial representation and it displays the various states of the system or a scenario and only the possible transitions between them. The reason when we say possible transitions only is just because the invalid transitions should not be displayed because if it is displayed, it becomes valid, right? Let's have a look again. So when we talk about the state transition diagram, that's what is the exhibition of this rep pictorial representation. However, the technique is called as state transition testing. Now, an STD certainly shows all valid transitions only, so it does not represent any invalid transition. However, there is a way to figure out what are the invalid transitions so that you can derive full coverage that is valid plus invalid test cases, right? So how to do that? So in case uh, when we talk about the STD, it consists of a pair of transition between two states, just like in the diagram below. So if you see, this is just a hypothetical example. Uh, we have three different states, S1, S2, S3. Now in this case, S1, uh, I can go from S1 to S2, S2 to S3, and same way I can come back from S3 to S2 and S2 to S1. So there are four transitions on the picture right here, and uh, four of them are valid. The All four, A, B, C, D, all the four are valid here. Now in this case, we totally understand that the there are four transitions which are actually possible as per the given scenario. You may certainly have a question that why I'm not going from S1 to S3. That's also possible. No, that's your prediction. You have to go as per the requirement. If requirement says the user should not be able to go from S1 to S3 directly, then that becomes invalid for you. That's the behavior, right? You are still in black box testing techniques. So in this case, that's how you identify that what are my invalid test cases. But to make it more technical from the uh, technique point of view, of course, the technique says, uh, STD should consist of pair of transition between any two states. So S1 to S2, you can see there is a pair like A and D. So it goes S1 to S2, S2 to S1. Same way uh, between S2 and S3, you have pair of transitions onward and return. But between S1 and S3, the pair is missing. Now that's how you identify the number of invalid test cases. So if the pair is missing between two states, then the missing transition or transitions is or are called as invalid transitions. So it's not necessary that both the transitions may be missing in all the cases. Sometimes just one will be missing, one will be there. So only the missing transitions are referred to as invalid. 
So in our below example, the diagram here, the S1 uh, to S2 and S3, uh, A, B, C, D are four valid and two invalid because S1 to S3 and S3 to S1 is not picturized here, imagining or understanding us that it is invalid. So in that context, we have six test cases and uh, four valid, two invalid. However, that's not what they will be asking you to do in the examination at foundation level. At foundation level, they expect you to read the diagram and based on that, pick up the right options, what they ask you about. So they can ask you questions about the test cases. They can ask you the questions about the characteristics, what we have discl displayed here on the screen uh, and discussed about that. So let's quickly take up some sample questions from here. But before that, another quick example to talk about that what a straight transition diagram could be all about. So talking about a quick example here. So if you see, uh, this is how exactly the technique works. So a straight transition diagram for a water is being considered. And again, I'm not talking about literally something in different conditions. You may come up and say that, oh, you know, we can talk about dry ice and that can go to vapors directly. So let's keep it simple and static because we're talking about techniques, not talking about how to test water and dry ice. Okay, so taking that into account, if you see ice, uh, I can heat it and get the water, then water, I can boil it and I get it the vapor. A vapor, I can condensate and get water back. And if I freeze water, I get ice back. But in this case, again, the four valid transitions are only possible. The other two, that is ice to vapor and vapor to ice in normal conditions are not at all possible, right? In that context, we don't draw. That's the reason I have just pictorially presented in a black color, bigger arrows, just to say that, hey, these are not actually there, but just to display in order to talk about and presenting it, okay? So it's not, these are just two invalid uh, test cases and they generally do not get displayed. I displayed because I wanted to talk about it. Okay, so these two are invalid and A, B, C, D are the valid transition. However, we draw a table like this and that's how we get our test cases from the scenario. So let's take some exam questions to understand what could be expected in the real time scenario. So right here, if you notice, uh, we got uh, the very first question to talk about. The question says, based on the given state transition diagram of a switch, which of the following test cases is invalid? Now, invalid is what is the ask here. And the most important thing is you have to follow the diagram and understand that if something is not being drawn, that means the transition is missing between two states. Those are the one which are called as invalid. So let's have a look at the quick diagram here. If you see, this is a switch diagram. So I have on to off, off to on. Then when I turned it on, it got burnt and it became faulty switch. And the loop below the fault that is an arrow turning around to the fault itself is basically a loop. That means the faulty switch will remain faulty forever and it will never come back to any other state. So that loop basically represents that. So I have S1, S2, S3, but with different names. So the question is, which one of this is invalid? So option A says off to on, of course, that is in the diagram, so it is valid. That means a user can do that. On to off is possible. A user can certainly uh, turn off a switch. C fault to on of course fault to on is not displayed here so at any point of time based on the given information that's an invalid test case okay fault to on is not displayed so it is invalid there's no return path as per the diagram and the option d says on to fault which is obviously written there so it's a line representing between on and fault so it is a valid transition so put together the right answer here is d the, sorry c that is fault to on is not a valid test case, which means invalid. Let's also look at one more example here, which would give you double confidence to be sure that what other types of questions can be asked. So additionally, one more point to add here that the pictures will be represented always in the examination questions and then they will be asking you questions. So do not forget that you have you don't have to draw the diagram, okay? They will not ask you to draw. However, the same thing will be asked to you in the advanced level. In advanced level, they will ask you to draw the diagram and then derive the number of test cases. But now they will just ask you what is valid, what is invalid at this point of time. So let's quickly look at the next one. And the next question here is talking about similar thing, but with different example. So given the following straight transition table, which of the test cases below will cover the following series of state transitions? So series is given to you. They want you to go through S1, S0, S1, S2, S0 again. So if you look at the diagram, we have S0, S1, S2. And we have transitions named there, that is A, B, C, D. 
So they want to follow S1 to S0, then S0 to S1, S1 to S2, and S2 to S0. So all you have to do is pick up each of these options A, B, C, D, and put it on the diagram and see which one is actually fulfilling that series. So if I look at the very first option, A says D, A, B, C. So okay, again, S1 to S0 is D, that's true. S0 to S1 is A, S1 to S2 is B, and S2 to S0 is C, which is absolutely right. But let's look at the other options. A, B, C, D. No, A, B is correct. S0 to S1, S1 to S2. But that's not what they're asking for. Okay. Uh, C, they say D, A, B, which is also possible. But that's not what they're asking because their series has been clearly defined. They want S1 to S0, S1, S0 to S1, and then S1 to S2. And after that, S2 to S0 as well. So just D, A, B alone will not do it. You need the C as well. Okay. And same way with the option D, A, B, C. This is also possible as per the diagram, but that's not the ask. So it's very, very important for you to understand what exactly are they asking you. And more importantly, you need to understand what is the technique all about, right? What a picture basically defines, what these diagrams basically represent, and how this adds value altogether towards preparing minimum number of test cases. Please do not try to do this mathematically. Try to understand the concepts because you don't just have to pass the exam, you have to apply and understand this technique that why are we even using this as a technique, right? So that should make sense at the end of the day. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.